Hey guys, welcome to BSL Season 13, Group A Winners Match, final match between Jiraiya and Master Ray. And this is, it's been an intense match thus far. This is on Good Night, which is a fantastic final map. First of all, Good Night, it's like whoever wins this makes it onto the round of eight. Whoever does not, Good Night, you're headed to the loser's bracket. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Jiraiya as the Red Zerg. Bottom left-hand corner, we have... Master Ray as the Pink Protoss. I could have done the color swap, but I felt like having the alliteration. The Pink Protoss. Although it's, you know what's weird is, this is maybe just my brain fuzzing in. It's almost like the pink is yellowish in this instance, because it makes it look like standard. I don't know. That looks like a stereotypical Protoss color, even though maybe it's just because of the, uh, the alliteration. Pylon on the front door, we'll see if he's going to go with the stereotypical gate opener once again. Drya opening with an Overlord at the very least at this side, but man, last match, intense. A couple things to note. It's crazy that Master Ray late game was, again, in the red just because of the constant drops from Jiraiya. Secondarily, he GG'd with 8k minerals in the bank, as some people pointed out in chat. And that just kind of goes to show how well Jiraiya was playing, how dominant his position was. <clears throat> and I really like just these two playing it out uh, even if both of these guys end up getting dropped, uh, so if one of these guys gets dropped in the loser's bracket, I would not be still shocked to see them uh, playing once again in the round of four or in the finals. I'm not sure how the bracket maneuver goes from there. It looks like we are seeing, so I shouldn't just call it always 11 hatch because this is an official 12th hatch from I Am Jiraiya. It looks like we are seeing the gateway opener. Master Ray once again skipping scouting, so uh, kind of scouted the 9 o'clock base for whatever reason, and is now doing a scout, <laughs> now doing the moving scout to the upper right. I should, I gotta point out, okay, as good as Master Ray is, still makes occasional mistakes here and there, um, as far as uh, where his units are, are located. Spawning pool, the follow, I, we'll see where the, the Zealot decides to go after the, after this. Maybe it's gonna start moving to that bottom right. This probe doesn't have enough information. It looks like it's still some minerals there from the nine o'clock location too. In the midst of everything, kind of odd play. So the drone scout has been scouted. This overlord is going to end up uh, able to approach and see that pylon on that corner. This probe now going to find it. We do have an initial zealot. It looks like he was trying to hold the ramp. It wanted to deny that scout. So unfortunately, that's going to delay its ability to get to this natural expansion. That spawning pool is going to be finished. There should be, actually, it looks like not a lot of larvae have been saved up. And this is going to be two Zealots incoming, so Master Ray might be able to get something done with this. So this is at least four Zergling to start, but four Zerglings is not a winning combination against two Zealots and a Probe. Jiraiya has taken that three o'clock base. Overlord checking out that Nexus being worked behind this. Additional Zerglings being produced, but they are going to be somewhat delayed. So it's going to be four Zerglings that need to buy some time for these initial two Zerglings to come out. They can get on the ramp. That might be a good situation, but the drone, they're... Point being, I think Master Ray might be able to get a drone or two in the midst of this. Unfortunately, dedicating a lot of Zerglings to engaging that probe behind that mineral line. So Master Ray waltzing back. It looks like instead he's going to just try to grab that back end mineral line and just be annoying as hell. And he can attack. Keep in mind, that probe can attack from behind that line. That probe sneaking forward and it's getting out of position. These Zealots engaging these Zerglings piecemeal. This one getting engaged, it looks like, by three. So that's going to get wiped out sooner rather than later. So Jiraiya dedicating a good amount of Zerglings initially. That probe still escaping with its life and the minerals. And a cannon warping in behind the lot of this. Nice front door seal for Master Ray in a much more comfortable position. He does want to take this probe scout out before it scouts that third because that's a lot of information to have. It looks like he's just going to back off. Probe's moving that natural expansion. Assimilator up. I'm wondering if Master Ray, with keeping this Probe Scout alive, if he's actually going to skip Cybernetics Core, or I should say, uh, not Cybernetics Core, if he's going to skip Stargate altogether. Because with Master Ray's style, or with Jiraiya's style thus far, I think he can get away with it. Because still, and we'll see if it goes to that four hatch play once again, this Probe will be the big indicator behind it. And I like that these Zerglings are trying to block that ramp. And kind of box that out. Only a single drone on gas, by, by the way, behind this. So I'm wondering if we are, in fact, going to see, yeah, four hatchery again. Four hatchery before uh, Hydralis Den. 
Once again, level one weapons being upgraded, a pylon putting uh, put along that corner. No Stargate as of yet from Master Ray. Moving forward with these three Zealots. So yeah, I think he's kind of realized what Jiraiya has been doing in this early game. So he's moving forward with these Zealots, I think, to kind of push that scouting information. So he's going to check that three o'clock base. He's going to move in with these Zealots to that natural expansion. I, he's going to see this hatchery here, which lets him know at the very least this is more of a bent towards Hydalus play. So he could skip that Stargate if he wanted to. Let's see if he goes with the Stargate nevertheless. No, he's planning a pylon. The Zealots trying to push up. They want to get a look in the main. Some drones pulling back. They want to hold this ramp. So that drone's getting taken out, but the Zealot makes it in. And as soon as he sees, okay, Lair being taken last second. Interesting. So Jiraiya trying to kind of save face by, pop, by popping that Lair last second. But I don't think Master Ray is going to take the bait on that. I would not be shocked, especially seeing that fourth hatchery on the front. He does have a Citadel of Dune to his natural expansion. But yeah, I think he can be safe going ahead and stipping, uh, skipping Stargate, getting a couple more gateways down. This is a lot of Zerglings now out for Jiraiya as far as a follow-up. Fifth hatchery at the 3 o'clock location. Hydralisten is being planted. But I think Master Ray, getting all that scouting information, put himself in a pretty good position. Although he didn't plant a lot of gateways uh, behind this upon skipping that Stargate. And actually, Jiraiya canceling the lair in the midst of all of this. Huge amount of Zerglings pressing that front. There are three Zealots there. Zealot Lake Speed being upgraded. It looks like four gateways. They're trying to stay. <laughs> this is kind of cute. The gateway's trying to be planted at the furthest distance away from the Overlord as possible to try to deny, I think, a, a modicum of information here. It's like, okay, you're going to scout this eventually, but let's try to make sure you scout it just a little bit later. Uh, Evolution Chamber now planted on the front for Jiraiya. Let's see if he continues that macro style. He does have front door control with a lot of these Zerglings. And it's going to be a while before Master Ray can really threaten him. So he does have an opportunity here to, yeah, macro up, throw it. And actually, is this going to be seven hatchery? So we got, what is this? Three, four, sorry, no, just six per typical uh, with the double Evolution Chamber. It's the, critically is this double Evolution Chamber that can be the big winner. Because level one weapons comes out earlier, but if you can get a, a jump start on that and have a big macro game in the mid. Ooh, this is clever. So Master Ray, the Overlord sneaking out to that corner. So now Master Ray doing a bit of mind games. He's like, okay, you're going to go ahead and try to play sneak, uh, sneaky or whatnot. I'm going to move out with speed zealots that are going to have that plus one weapons. Force a lot of, uh, wow, that sunken colony. This is an interesting SimCity. Those sunken colonies are really pressed in there. But he's going to go double Stargate and do a heavy double Stargate plus one weapons upgrade behind this. So it's like, yeah, go ahead and have a lot of drones. Go ahead and roll your economy. But I'm just going to steamroll you by taking out every Overlord behind this that I can take out. Big dive into that 3 o'clock base. Drones being forced to engage. That's a great SimCity, though. It's really wipe distracting and wiping out a lot of this. The drones being pulled out. So a decent defense by Jiraiya. But a lot of Zealots getting wiped out in the midst of this. And they didn't accomplish a lot, to be honest. This Sunken Colony is still going to stand. What a... I love that SimCity. So both Sunken Colonies still standing. I don't think a lot of drones got wiped out. And a solid defense by I Am Jiraiya. But let's see if uh, it'll be enough. So... Th and this is with an Overlord in the base. Now granted, this is a lot of Hydralisks underneath. I almost wish Master Ray had actually preserved those Zealots. Threatened, pulled back out. Now moving to Lair Tech. Setting up with those Zealots at the 9 o'clock base. This is a very brave grab out of an expansion, just assuming that Jiraiya isn't going to build up and go for a counterattack. But a big investment all the way around for Master Ray. It looks like he's going to go for... Yeah, he's going to try to surprise Jiraiya with this. Some Zerglings, yeah, moving out into midfield. But with a solid ground army to follow this up in those... A bunch of Corsairs overhead, and without Scourge, this could end up being a sweep. Essentially, Mastery could win the game just by having a powerful enough attack force to wipe out a lot of the ground troops and just clear out every Overlord overhead. And keep Jiraiya essentially in the red the rest of the game. Jiraiya grabbing an expansion in that upper right-hand corner of the Hyrule is starting to move out in the field. Cannons being morphed in to the 9 o'clock. But here's the thing with this heavy investment... Keep in mind, that's going to come at the cost of more High Templar or more gas-heavy units. 
the Corsairs starting to sneak out. That Overlord still didn't scout them to the corner. But the Hydra is pouring into that 9 o'clock base. And these three Zelts and two cannons are not going to be sufficient to defend all of that. Some High Templar moving up. They want to go ahead. I don't know that this is enough of an attack force to even deal with the Hydra's that are there, to be honest. Yeah, the High Templar scooting back, realizing that's the case. A bit of an army, like they need to sit back, maybe even some additional cannons drop. I feel like Master Ray trying to do too much, maybe. Because this is a really sizable, powerful attack. If you have enough troops underneath it, but right now, I think with that big attack, that 3 o'clock base that got cleaned up, I'm not sure if it's enough. The Hydralisks working on these Corsairs. The Corsairs do not care, wiping out all sorts of overlords. That's five overlords down. They're going to proceed... Looking at, and it's just a hunting game at this stage. This Overlord getting picked off. Jiraiya deep in the red now. A lot of Hydralisks are underneath to go ahead and clear out the Corsairs otherwise, though. So I'm not. this isn't as strong as it might have been otherwise. But you can see Jiraiya sitting at 55 supply. And the Corsair is definitely, I think, paying off. Wow, huge amounts of damage. 82 in the red. More troops moving up. Let's see if Master Ray can go ahead and now establish that 9 o'clock base behind that in the midst of this. He's no overlords to find in that upper right-hand base. Yeah, definitely catching Drea off guard. Drea trying to get that spire up. Is he going to continue with this? No, he's going to just uh, sneak that. The Hydralis is trying to push into that upper right-hand corner. Master Ray has scouted that. But a decent amount of damage done in the midst. I, The one thing... In the midst of all this is I think with Jiraiya taking this upper right-hand base and potentially actually grabbing that behind that and Master Ray not having a large ground army to press out behind this, I, I feel like Jiraiya, yes, he ended up losing a lot of overlords. Yes, that slowed down his economy briefly. Yes, that allowed Master Ray to grab that third. But as far as the follow-up and map control, I think Jiraiya is still in a strong position, especially with the, devil, uh, the double evolution, the devil evolution, the double evolution chambers. Uh, that are upgrading behind this because we already got level one weapons level one carapace and Yeah, you have level one weapons level one armor, uh, but this forge briefly unpowered and Basically in a bit you're gonna have a uh, sizable advantage In upgrades for master ray and he's went gone for a tech switch. He's got six mutalisks wandering out in the field Looking to pick off high templar, but I'm not sure I would have done that with actually a huge amount of mutalisks. There's no, there is one cannon at the main. I like the the tech switch in the midst of this. Actually, we'll see if he he can capitalize on it. I'd say guess like so. It's there. It's awesome. Master Ray forcing some of these hydralisks back in the midfield. I think with all of that spread out, Jiraiya looking for High Templar to pick off, but there's not a lot of High Templar to find. It looks like. They're still sneaking it back here in this corner. Let's see if... Yeah, that one's going to get picked off. Master Ray immediately morphing to an Archon to try to preserve it. That Archon... Nice micro by Jiraiya. Going to catch this. Two Corsair that somehow cycled all the way from that backhand corner. That backhand, that upper right-hand corner right there. The Zealots and the Dragoons pushing in there. But between all the tech that Master Ray was investing, he does not have any observers with this attack force. So the Zealots just getting melted. Because, yeah, he's trying to go High Templar and Corsair and everything else. And so he did not get uh, an observer with that grouping. There's the observatory right there. Mutalis engaging, pick off one High Templar, the second High Templar. Ooh, actually, that second High Templar somehow escapes the midst of this. The Dragoon's pounding away at those Mutalis, so I think that Mutal force is going to be cleaned up. So this attack force for Master Ray going to get wiped out otherwise. So Master Ray sitting back at three bases. I still worry about his long-term prospects, though, because level one weapons, level one armor... And you've got level 2 weapons, level 2 armor, plus a huge economy. And Jiraiya, yeah, already grabbing that natural expansion here in that upper right. So it's looking like a similar situation to game 2. More High Templar getting picked off. And again, High Templar would be the thing with that upgrade advantage that would keep Master Ray in this match. But so many High Templar have been picked off or been forced to morph into things they didn't want to be. There's a nice Ice Storm to go ahead and back off the front. But more reinforcements coming in. Master Ray needs to, yeah, just morph a bunch of High Templar in a hurry to have any shot at staying in this. It looks like he's trying to fill in with Zealous. I don't, he 
might have the gas to do it, grabbing another gateway behind this, pressing a little bit forward, but yeah, I'm concerned for Master Ray here in the long term. The storm, the side storms are really going to have to be on point, and he doesn't have a lot of side storms to work with. Overlord getting picked off overhead. There's still no observer with his attack force, but there's no lurkers underneath, so it's not going to be that big an issue. But the the Hydralisks continue to press forward. Overlord's wiped out. That's putting Jiraiya in the red, but he was planning on dedicating these attack forces. I think he was okay losing these attack forces anyway. Pressing into the natural expansion, this might be the winning moment. No side storm left in that High Templar. And there's GG from Master Ray realizing he just doesn't have enough side storm. He doesn't have a sizable enough army and is behind in the upgrades to go ahead and clean that army out. So Master Ray drops to the loser's bracket. Jiraiya advances to the round of eight. Well played all the way around. Some fun matches. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.